Do you want to know how a woodworker makes custom pieces for customers as well as for her own? Have you ever wanted to make a garden trellis but don't know where to start? Would you like to see how a group of talented volunteers restore and maintain classic aircraft for display? On the latest episode of Evolution Power Tools TV, we'll be digging deeper into the amazing world of making. You're right everyone, my name's Joel from Average Joel's Joinery and I'm excited to introduce to you a brand new episode of Evolution Peritools TV, a monthly show dedicated to bringing you inspirational stories, DIY guides and tips and tricks to make you a better maker. We've got loads of great Evolution Peritools TV content on our channel so make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn that notification on to guarantee you never miss an episode. Okay, let's see what we've got coming up. First up, we meet multi-skill creator Hannah Ashton to visit her home and check out some of the brilliant projects she's worked on. Make sure you click through to the website to watch Hannah's guide to building a garden trellis. Next, we take a trip to Solway Aviation Museum to find out how a group of volunteers tackle the daunting task of restoring and maintaining classic aeroplanes. Make sure you stick around to see the rare look behind the scenes. After that, Vicky is back again to speak to our special guest. On this episode, she'll be having a chat with Stuart Matthews, who you may know as Proper DIY on YouTube. He'll take us through his journey to becoming the go-to guy for DIY. Then we'll be continuing our short series of three build guides. I've created a how-to video on making a bar stool, and we'll be showing you some of that later on. If you can't wait to see the guide, simply click the link in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. Finally, it's competition time. Megan will be here to take a look at recent creations and announce whose project has won some great prizes. We'll also announce the winner of our big competition and introduce next month's prizes. Okay, so now you've seen what's coming up, let's get started. Here's Hannah to show us her DIY projects. Hello, I'm Hannah Ashton. I'm a woodworker, creator and designer of functional art. Today I'm going to show you my workshop and some of the things that I've made. So come and see. So this is my workshop. It's at the bottom of my garden. It's a wonderful space to create and build. And I've now got this amazing space that I can share with the whole family. My daughters can come down here and create things and then also my husband loves to come in here. In here I have lots of tools and it's a growing collection. I'm a little bit addicted to tools. So this is my very important shelf. It may look like a pile of wood but there's very, very special pieces. So for example, got my little block and this is what I put onto the fence on my miter saw so that I can get repeated lengths of wood. And then this little jig is allowing you to draw the centre line along a piece of wood. My youngest daughter made this for me and she arrived home with it and it was so special because she had taken what I have as my logo and used the printer at school, so that was really wonderful. And she's a big fan of the Avengers and so she's carved this out and I just love having them around and that I've inspired her to make these. So the first things I made were little houses which reminded me of my childhood on the Isle of Wight and then I started making candle holders and vases and then as the techniques have developed and the tools that I've got I've started making benches and pegboards and piano racks which is something that I really think is quite special. So out here in the garden, there are several projects that I've completed. One of them is a chair that was broken. At the same time, I had acquired some artificial grass from around the corner 
and I just thought ah, I could add those two together and so now I have my artificial grass chair and I also wanted to create a lovely space in the garden to sit. Down in the cellar we had an old surround of a fireplace and I thought that would be a wonderful focal point to have in that area. And alongside that is now our bath. We've cut the edge off and we've made a chaise long. So now I've made a trellis and I've used reclaimed wood from the local timber yard. They were packing pieces that they were just going to throw away and I've now put them all together, stained them and it's a lovely addition to the side of the shed. So a new addition to our family is this camper van. It has revolutionised family days out. We had it converted by a lovely company, but we've made a few tweaks. Come and see. So originally this was just a panel van and the company put in the chairs and then also the cabinetry and the flooring and also the pop top. So the projects that we have done, we've added shelves to the front and then we've also added a shelf at the top to give myself more workspace. The van has improved my life and the family so much. It's such a wonderful thing to do with the children at the age that they are and we feel really lucky to have it. The inspiration behind my projects is the practical need and for things to make my life easier. So one of them is the piano rack that I have in the porch and I wanted something to have multi-functions and to also look good and so I'm able to hang things up, I can also put my boots on there as well as it being a shelf. So another project that we've done in the house is the panelling in our bedroom and Initially I thought it was going to be really difficult, but actually it was a very straightforward project. We went to the local woodyard who cut the long strips of the MDF for us, and then we cut the horizontal pieces using our mitre saw, and then we secured them onto the wall using adhesive. One of the very important members of the family is our dog Sky, and we have made her a few things because she needs to be kept in a few places. And so we've made a dog gate for the hallway, but we've also made a gate for the garden to stop her going into the garden when we're trying to contain her a bit more. Thank you for joining me today in my workshop and to see some of the things that I've made. If you'd like to know how to make this trellis, then click on the link in the description below for the full guide. Make sure you click the links in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find Hannah's guide to building a trellis from scratch, but you'll also find much more great content from everyone featured in this episode. Thanks Hannah, it was great to see the things you make for customers as well as the bits of DIY you've done to improve your home. If you want to see Hannah's full guide to building the garden trellis, the link's in the description. Later in the show, I'll be revealing who has won last month's competitions and I'll be telling you how you could win a Samsung Galaxy Watch or an Amazon Echo Dot. Keep watching the Evolution Power Tools TV for your chance to win. Before we move on to our next feature, now's a good time to take a look at what you guys have been doing this month. Stephen has been making alterations to his extension he's built. Nice work, Stephen. Jana has finished her oak table project. What an amazing piece and a great finish. Josh has been putting together his Evolution miter saw. Can't wait to see what you make with it, Josh. Al has been using his Evolution cordless tools to make light work of removing a conservatory. What a great video, Al. Make sure that you tag us in all of your project videos. We love seeing what you guys are getting up to. Now it's time to visit Solway Aviation Museum to see how the guys restore and maintain classic aircraft. Let's take a look. Welcome to the Solway Aviation Museum here at Carlisle Airport. The museum is made up of some 24 aircraft and other smaller items held within buildings. 
The museum is run by volunteers who work within our workshop and today we're going to meet some of these volunteers. The Solar Aviation Museum is a collection of historic aircraft. The original plan was to have 1950s to 1970s British aircraft, but the plans don't always work out. We got offers of more different types of planes which we accepted, and it's just evolving and becoming a more interesting place. The Sowie Aviation Society came about in 1961 with the Royal Observer Corps. They were meeting down at the tower on Carlisle Airport here. They sat down there and had cups of tea and biscuits. And after that, we then started acquiring aircraft. And the first one they collected was the Vulcan Bomber. And that was bought for £5,000 from the RAF. It flew into Carlisle Airport in 1983, after the Falklands War. So the Aviation Museum has progressed from a, a porter cabin outside to three large buildings where we hold aircraft, part of a nuclear attendant, other smaller parts. And within the workshop here, this is where all the smaller components are made and all the maintenance is done. At the moment, we're working on jacks for aircraft and also tyres. I've been here for about two years now, mostly involved in restoration and maintenance of the exhibits the aircraft on display. I served in the Royal Air Force for 14 years and left in 1997. After another couple of jobs I've now retired and was looking for something to do to keep myself occupied in the later years. Well our volunteers come from a wide range of groups. We've got TV engineers, we have alarm engineers, electricians, aircraft engineers. We've got library assistants, you name it. Everybody comes from a wide walk of life. What we offer is great fun, actually. I've enjoyed it. I mean, I've been here since 1991, and it's been really good fun. My main role has been in the past working on the Vulcan, looking after it, but people come along with any skill. We can use all skills because we can do training, we can show them what we want, we can show them how to do a job and how to do it properly. And what they get is a sense of achievement. You know, you, you come to the museum and look at, at the aircraft at the end of a, a day when they're starting to look as though they came out of the factory. You're looking at the TripAdvisor results, how people say how fantastic the aircraft all are, how wonderful the volunteers are. It really is a good feeling and it's a great place to be. I haven't worked on aircraft for 25 years and it's great to relive my old days and do a bit of metal bashing, a bit of riveting, replacement of components and repair. It's great to sort of keep your skills going. Just something to keep you busy, keep your mind active and keep you physically active. And there are a great bunch of people here. It's good to come and have a chat and share life with people. Good to see the people coming in and smiles on their faces and people who've been associated with aircraft in the past and maybe been in the forces like to come and see the aircraft they used to know and love and it's great to allow people to get inside the aircraft and experience what it would be like maybe to be a pilot or an air crew. Oh, I feel quite chuffed yeah really pleased to be part of that. Being a volunteer and making things with your own hands and the tools that we, you know, we've acquired over the time, it's a real pleasure to see other people's faces when they see your work, the smiles that it brings to people. Thank you for visiting the museum today. If you'd like to learn more about the exhibits here at the museum, click the link in the description below for a more in-depth video. Make sure you click the links in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find a more in-depth video about Solway Aviation Museum, but you'll also find more great content from everyone featured in this episode. A big thank you to Solway Aviation Museum for showing us around. It was amazing to see their collection of aircraft and the people responsible for restoring them. 
Click the link in the description if you want to find out more about the museum. Before we meet this month's guest, you guys have been sending us your DIY tips. Let's take a look. Make sure to look up videos on how to do something if you don't know how to do it, because there is a whole wealth of information and resources out there. Always make sure you've got the right protective equipment for the right job, especially when it comes to um, spraying or sanding, because at the end of the day, you've only got one set of lungs. Always save your scraps and offcuts of wood, because you never know when you might need them. Make sure you've got steel toe cap boots. Steel toe cap boots always come in handy. Just last week, I stood on a nail. I was out of action for two days. Uh, my wife got me some antibiotics in the end and it cleared it up. Always do you. Trends are a great way to see different textures and colours and think outside the box. But ultimately your DIY project is there to make you happy, so make sure it does. Thanks to everyone for giving us your DIY tips. If you'd like to get involved, all you have to do is make a video of yourself telling us your top five DIY tips. Just tag us in the video and you could be featured in our next episode. If your video is featured, we'll send you a brand new Evolution Mitosaur, so make sure you get involved. Right, it's time to meet our guest maker. He provides DIY guides on a huge range of topics, from laying block paving to building portable shelves. His no-nonsense, easy-to-follow style has seen him amass a huge following in a very short space of time. His aim is to inspire everyone to give it a go. It's YouTube's very own Stuart Matthews, also known as Proper DIY. So thank you so much, Stuart, for joining it's a us. Pleasure. Could you talk us through how you got into YouTube in the first place? Because you've not been doing it for very long, have you? No, I haven't. No. A few years ago I was living and working abroad and I noticed that in the evening I ended up watching a lot more YouTube than television. And I thought at that point it might be quite nice to do the same. I decided to set up the channel as a trial for one year and then at the end of the year, if no one's watching, put the camera down, just carry on with the jobs and we're maybe a year and a half, just over a year and a half later and it seems to have taken off and I've now got a full-time job again. Yeah, so, so yeah, much, yeah. So much for early retirement. Yeah. But are you enjoying it? Oh, absolutely. No, I mean, you have to do what you love. Where did you learn all of these DIY skills because it's very varied. I think I started fairly young. My dad was a big DIYer and obviously in the family we didn't have the money to bring in decorators and builders and things like that. So if you wanted your bedroom decorator, go and buy some paint and decorate it. You just naturally sort of come through a system where if you want something doing, do it yourself. And the more you learn, the more confident you get and the bigger the projects get as well. So where do you get your inspiration for your projects? Most of the projects are things that I would normally be doing anyway. Then I intermix some tool reviews with some tips and tricks just to sort of spice things up a little bit. And then you've got the complete picture. What videos do you think do the best for you or what's been the most surprising? My highest viewed video is how to straighten a fence post. In the back of my house I've got a nice big long fence that's all straight and there's one fence post coming over. And I thought I'll knock out a quick sort of nine or ten minute video. I also realised in the intro I was actually talking to the fence post, which I, I do. I, I do that. these strange things sometimes. That. And this comment's like I instantly subscribed just from that intro. Really? Yeah. So I think a lot of other people <laughs> did the same thing. So out of all the projects you've done so far, which are you most proud of? I think if I had to pick one, it would be a video that I did where I turned a cheap kettle barbecue into a barbecue cart. But because I don't need a barbecue cart all the time, I designed it so I could take off the tops and make it into different things. Yeah. So one minute it can be barbecue, the next minute it can be like an outside drinks trolley yeah. and a potting bench as well, all of which I've used this summer for those things. What does your wife think about you starting a YouTube channel because obviously she's not been on there. No. My wife has always been really supportive in everything that I've done. Even as I film the videos and I edit them as well, I do ask her advice. You do need that sort of support behind you because it can be quite lonely. You can end up in a workshop on your own all week and then ending up in your office editing. So to have that sort of support and advice is, is really quite important. So knowing what you know now about how your audience reacts to your YouTube videos, yeah. 
Is there any advice that you would give them for starting out? I think two things. First of all, you know, you need to start small. Don't think you can fit a bathroom or a kitchen on day one. So start with the smaller items. Gradually, your skills will work up. And a big job, like putting in a bathroom, is just lots of little jobs added together. I think the other important thing is to, at some point, you've actually got to start. You can't just watch YouTube videos, and then you'll find out that, once again, it's practice. You, if you do that more often, then suddenly, before you know it, you'll be doing things that other people can't. So what's your favourite tool so far? I like power tools. I don't think I've got a favourite. I just like tools to do what they're designed to do. So anyone that's watching my channel will tell you that I don't use too many fancy tools. I just use the basic tools. But what's really handy is just to have like a mitre saw that will give you an exact cut because it's set up properly. Mm -hmm. And it will give it to you quicker and more accurate than you can do with hand tools. So just having half a dozen of those sort of tools dotted around the workshop, you've then covered 99% of anything you really want to do. Because you recently re reviewed the Evolution table saw, didn't yep. you? Yep. So with your YouTube channel being really successful in a short space of time, have you thought about what you're going to do next, whether there's going to be any sidelines from it? That's not in my mind at the moment because it takes me all week to do just proper DIY. Other people have asked that same question. However big it gets, I need to make sure that it's still aimed and focused on the average DIY because that's what it's all about. I think it's got a long way to go, to be honest with you. I feel as if I've just scraped the surface. Sometimes when I'm thinking about the next video, it's not quite as straightforward as that. But there is so much more to teach people. I'm just going to keep going and I'm just going to aim at those sort of people and see where it goes. Thanks so much for joining us, Stuart. My pleasure. And thank you for watching at home. And if you want to find out more about Stuart, you can click the link in the description and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks Vicky, it was brilliant to find out more about Stuart. If you want to see the full interview, click the link in the description to go through to the website. Before we move on to my maker's guide, let's meet some of the people that we caught up with at this year's Screwfix Live event. Screwfix Live is one of the largest tools exhibitions in the UK. We absolutely love coming to support Screwfix. Of course, shout about the Evolution brand. It gives the end user a chance to come down, see all of the brands, come and have a chat with us, come and see live demonstrations and get some really good deals on the day. When you go to Screwfix, it's all kind of in a catalogue, so it's quite nice to sort of see stuff, you know, in front of you and see the demos and learn a bit more and have some more time to ask questions and stuff like that. So yeah, really useful. It's good to see the individual manufacturers here. You can ask them about innovation and stuff, you know, and get up to date. You get to see stuff that you don't get to see in the stores, basically. So you get to see all the, the stuff face to face because they don't have that much out in the stores. So it's always good to see and get the demonstrations. Goodie bags are always good as well. I've got the Rage S table saw and I've recently acquired sort of metalworking equipment so I was looking at whether the chop saw would potentially sort of cut the material for that and it seems to do. We're always using old pallets and they've always got nails in them or something like that and these blades just cut through everything like butter. Cordless tools, yeah, it's great. The, the batteries are compatible with their valve because there are so many tools out there and the fact that they're compatible means there's a bigger range of, of tools that are available. And I wish other companies would do the same. It's great. Join Evolution and, and it would be a revolution. <laughs>
Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this simple breakfast bar stool. This makes a great weekend project. You'd be able to make a couple of these and have them ready for breakfast on Monday morning. This DIY project uses just a few tools and materials and can be made in just a few hours. So you've got your tools ready and you've got your materials sorted. Let's get some PPE on and get the project started. The first step in this project is to get the pieces cut for the seat on the bar stool. I'm using the 100mm wide by 50mm deep board. We need three pieces cut at 300mm long. So we've got three pieces to cut. Let's show you using three different tools. Right, for the construction on the seat, we're gonna be using wood glue and pocket hole screws. The screws I'm using here are 64 millimeters long. That's because the boards are 50 millimeters thick. The first thing we need to do though is set up our pocket hole jig. So we've got the seat section glued up and drying. Now we can turn our attention to the legs. And for the legs, we need four pieces cut to 630 millimeters long, but they're not just regular 90 degree cuts. We're gonna do a double bevel. So we need to tilt our blade on the saw to five degrees, and we also need to adjust from the fence by five degrees as well. So we're done with sanding, it's time for construction. And we're gonna start by making up one of the A-frames for the base of the bar stool. Now we need to make sure that these are beveling in in the same direction, because this is gonna form our first A-frame. Now the construction on this is really simple. We're gonna use one of the smaller top stretchers to span the distance at the top of the A-frame. And one of the midway stretchers will come in later on to fill in the piece at the bottom. So with the two A-frames done, I can bring in the other stretchers, get some pocket holes drilled, and we can join them together. These are gonna be used later to attach the seat to the rest of the bar stool. So that's all the pocket holes drilled now, we can get the bar stool constructed. I'm gonna start with the top stretcher like we did for the A-frames. I'm gonna put in place the one A-frame, offer up the second A-frame. And the top stretcher should fit in between. We'll add some wood glue and a couple more pocket hole screws and get that secured in place. And with that last stretcher in place, that's the base to the bar still done. Next thing to do is get it painted and then we can attach the seat. That wax has had time to set up now, so I'm gonna give it a quick buff and then we can get it attached to the legs with some pocket hole screws. We want to make sure that the holes we drilled for the pocket holes are on the underside of the seat. I'm gonna flip the legs over, get these positioned on top of the bottom of the seat. We're gonna try and get it lined up so it's got an even hole varang all the way around. With that in place. And that's the breakfast bar still done. I really hope that you like this one and I definitely recommend making a couple of these. It doesn't take that much longer to make two when you're already making one. If you are gonna give this a go for yourself, be sure to tag us on social media. We absolutely love to see what you get up to. That's it from me, I'll catch you on the next one. Make sure you click the links in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find my full guide to making a bar stool, but you'll also find much more great content from everyone featured in this episode. I hope that introduction to the bar stool build has inspired you to want to see more. If it has, click the link in the description to see the full video. And remember, in the next episode, I'll show you how to make a rocking horse. Right, it's competition time now, so it's over to Megan to find out what you can win.
Thanks, Joe. Hi, guys. I'm back to announce the winner of last episode's competitions and tell you how you can win some brilliant prizes. I'm Megan, Head of Customer Service for Evolution Power Tools. Myself and my team work hard to help our customers with their Evolution products. And today, I have the additional job of letting you know which one of you has won our pitch competition and will be enjoying their prize of a Ring indoor camera. I'll also be announcing the winner of last episode's big competition that had a grand prize of an LG 32-inch smart LED TV. Make sure you stick around as later on, I'll be telling you how you can win an Amazon Echo Dot for taking part in our pitch competition. We'll also be giving away a Samsung Galaxy Watch and all you have to do is answer a very simple question. Before we get onto the competitions, I just want to tell you a bit about some of the conversations I and my team have had with our customers this month. Chris contacted us looking for a spare part for his R255 SMS miter saw after trying to purchase on our website. The customer service team were able to quickly identify the part that was needed, a PCB, and advised the customer how to purchase. Chris was very happy that this query was resolved and left positive feedback. Edward called us as he was needing a spare part for his R210 SMS miter saw. From the customer's description, we were able to quickly identify that it was a back fence that he required. After the conversation and the part had arrived, Edward left some positive comments. Julie contacted us via live chat regarding her laser on her miter saw, as she had thought it was faulty. We were able to diagnose the issue in real time and were able to establish that the separate laser switch was in the off position. Julie was really happy with the help she received. If you need any information about Evolution Power Tools products or any support with your purchases, our customer service and technical support team are on hand 8am to 5pm Monday to Friday. Right, let's get into the competitions. You guys have been sending in the pictures of the things that you've been making and they all look really good. Let's have a look at some of them. John has made this hi-fi cabinet. Great job, John, and thanks for the picture. Michael has made this amazing sign from pallet wood. We love this piece of art. Amy used Evolution Power Tools to make this hairpin desk. Really nice work, Amy. It looks great. Steve has made an early Christmas decoration using metal and pallet wood. Nice work, Steve. Michael has completed this amazing decking project in his garden. Well done, Michael. It looks brilliant. All of your pictures have been great, but only one of you has won the competition and the ring indoor cam. I'm very pleased to announce that our winner is Amy for her picture of the hairpin desk. Very good work, Amy. Your prize is on its way to you now. Next month for our November 2022 episode, we will be giving away an Amazon Echo Dot as our picture competition prize. Complete any room with Alexa. Amazon's most popular smart speaker has a sleek, compact design that fits perfectly into small spaces. If you want to take part in our pitch competition, all you have to do is post a picture on Instagram of something that you have made recently. Make sure you use the hashtag, hashtag EvolutionTVWin, or your picture may be missed. You can even just tag us in a picture that you've uploaded already. It doesn't have to be new. Just add the hashtag to your existing picture to enter. In our last episode, we gave away an Amazon Fire Stick. Congratulations again to Steve, whose picture of his hand-built potting table saw him bagging this fantastic prize. Steve has sent us this video of his prize. Hello, I'm just here to say thank you to uh, Evolution Power Tools. Uh, I entered a competition a little while ago and I won the Amazon 4K Fire Stick, and, which is amazing, because now I have a telly in the bedroom. Thank you for Evolution, you're amazing. Thanks again, Steve. Remember, if you're watching this after November 2022, the competition will be closed. You can, however, still take part. Click the competition link in the description to see the latest prizes. Right, in our last episode, you took part in our big competition to win an LG 32-inch smart LED TV. All you had to do was answer A, B or C to this simple question. In the last episode, Vicky showed us around her current home. The question is, where does Vicky live at the moment? Is it A, a house, B, a narrowboat, or C, a campervan? 
The answer is, of course, B, a narrow boat. Well done to Melanie for getting the answer correct. Your LG 32 inch smart LED TV is on its way to you. If you want to be our big winner, just like Melanie, stick around for this month's grand prize competition. For next month's big competition, you could be in with a chance of winning a Samsung Galaxy watch worth 25999. All you have to do is answer the following very simple question. Earlier in the episode, Joe showed his latest cordless project. The question is, what did he make? Is it A, a garden bench, B, a toy box, or C, a bar stool? Click the competition link in the description to answer the question. We will then choose a winner at random from all of the correct entries and announce who has won on the next episode. Remember that if you're watching this after November 2022, the competition will no longer be active, but you can still click the link to see the latest question and prize. Before I go, I have even more Evolution products to give away. To win yourself an Evolution Mitosaur, click through to the competitions page to find out what you need to do. Okay, that's it for competitions this month. Make sure you click the link in the description to take part in the competitions and win some great prizes. I'll see you next time. Thanks, Megan. Right, that's it for today's episode. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so that you never miss an upcoming episode. Please comment below if you have any questions, suggestions or ideas for content and make sure you come back next time for more great inspirational stories. Thanks a lot for staying with me and I hope you enjoyed the show. That's it from me and I'll catch you again on the next one.